Exotic weapons are some of the most unique, versatile and downright broken weapons in Destiny 2. These weapons can do anything from creating entire mountain ranges of stasis crystals, to blowing up an entire army with just a few shots, to shooting slightly weirdly. Today I'm going to be ranking every single exotic weapon in the entire game for PvE, I'm sure that much was clear from the title, but instead of simply slapping together a highly opinionated and somewhat inconsistent list like I may or may not have done in the past, I'm going to make sure these rankings are as objective as possible, so offend as few people as possible. That said, I'm still putting Cerberus in detail. Sweet Business is the absolute pinnacle of brain dead weapons. This thing starts out shooting painfully slowly, but quickly ramps up into an ad killing monster. If you're on Titan, and let's be honest, if you're using this you probably are, Actium War Rig and just two pickups of special ammo can let you shoot constantly for a total of 1 minute and 45 seconds. For reference, that's longer than it takes Destiny YouTubers to do their intros. When you do inevitably hit that reload button though, you can go outside, touch grass, get a job, work that job for 6 months, go to college, get a degree, get married, have 5 children, get sent to a retirement home, all before the reload actually finishes. And that still wouldn't be longer than a Rick Cacus intro. This gets B tier for... The Sturm is definitely a weapon that exists. Its exotic perk reloads your energy weapon when you kill an enemy. This is essentially the reverse of another really broken perk that absolutely everyone uses, Sympathetic Arsenal. It also has a perk called Storm and Stress, which reloads the weapon and grants a single bonus damage round after getting a kill with Drang. In a sandbox where double primaries are all but extinct, running these two together would cause more problems than a Gambit player in a raid LFG. This gets D tier for Drang's better. Vigilance Wing is a kinetic pulse rifle that shoots 5 bullets instead of 3, that's very exciting. It also improves your weapon's performance when your hopeless teammates inevitably die. What does it mean by weapon performance? I'll leave that to some PvP player in the comments. There isn't a conceivable universe where running this instead of a regular pulse is going to make sense, unless you just like having that extra bullet, I guess? This gets C tier for kinda bad. The C is silent. The next exotic to be ranked is the Rat King. Use this in a fire team to do insane average amount of damage. The perk Vermin gives you invisibility when you reload after a kill. This is designed to reflect how real life rats scurry off into the shadows after they attack. When you shoot again, you'll lose your invisibility. This is designed to reflect how real life rats emerge suddenly from the shadows ready to attack. This would be quite fun if it worked with Jer Falcons, but this is a kinetic, so it does not. Well, it kinda does, but I'm still not using it. This gets C tier for certainly not good. Mida Multitool has the exotic perk Mida Multitool. This increases your movement speed. I don't see any reason why you'd use this thing instead of a legendary scout for PvE, but I'm sure there's probably a dedicated population of Mida fans that are typing out the most egregious comments imaginable as we speak. You also keep your radar when aiming down sights, which is particularly useful in Nightfalls when you have a Chaff or Blackout modifier. D for depressing. Crimson, this is a weird amalgamation of a panned cannon and a pulse rifle. In some ways I like it, but in others I definitely don't. It fires a 3 shot burst, but also regains health on kills and refills the magazine on precision kills. It is definitely a fun weapon, don't get me wrong, but is it worth using your exotic slot for? That I'm not so sure of. You could make an argument for using this with Lucky Pants though, the bonus damage you get can reach them pretty high numbers. It's a shame that Lucky Pants will never, has never, and won't ever be meta. B for below average. The Jade Rabbit is a scout rifle with the intrinsic perk Fate of All Falls. Chain precision shots to gain bonus damage on your next body shot and return ammo to the mag. Basically it's a B-Tech version of Headseeker, which I'm sure is everyone's favourite PvE perk. It also has Zen Moment, so if you're on console it's going to feel very 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 slightly better. Pretty bad for most PvE content, but potentially usable for GMs. You try it first though. C tier for... I'm running out of adjectives. Huckleberry, like Sweet Business, a classic in the arsenal of anyone that just wants to shut their brain off and murder everything on your screen. It has, number one, a much faster fire rate than it reasonably should, number two, has rampage, and number three, reloads partially when you get a kill. The catalyst makes this reload your entire magazine on just one kill. In casual content, this thing destroys. Just look at how many kills I stole from my teammates in a single strike. That said, I can't really recommend this thing outside of casual content since most of the buffs require kills to activate. In harder content, you'll be getting less kills, therefore less rampage procs and less crazy reloads. On the lower end of A tier for actually pretty decent. Zero's Regime is a 600 RPM auto rifle that increases its damage as you go lower into the magazine, and gives you a 
chance at a heal. There's also two firing modes for this gun, one of which increases rate of fire and one of which decreases it but increases damage. You also have to go into the menu to change modes. Look, there's an enemy that's kind of far away, let me open up my inventory, go to weapon settings, switch the mode, close the inventory, ADS, and then shoot the weapon to deal slightly more damage. Don't really see a reason why you'd use this thing over any legendary auto, plus it runs out of ammo incredibly fast if you're using the rapid fire mode. C tier for catastrophic. Cerberus plus one. Oh, here we go. It's possibly the worst exotic in the game. It shoots out of four barrels at once randomly for some reason, making it a weird shotgun auto rifle hybrid thing. I'm fairly sure this is still the least used exotic in the game, and I can see why. If anyone approaches you on the street and tries to get you to use this thing, run away. Like a lot of the exotics in this game, the Cerberus Plus One has a cult-like following that you don't want to be mixed up in. I've experienced their crusade firsthand, and I've barely escaped with my life. D- D tier. There, I said it. Wish Ender is a weapon I'd slept on for ages, even after it got its intrinsic anti-barrier buff. That said, I'd still rather use Arbalest 99% of times. The other 1% is when I needed to get those dragon eggs. I know it's quite good currently, and maybe it'll be better if Arbalest ever gets a nerf, but I just don't see a reason to use it when kinetic special weapons are so good. A tier for alright. Malfeasance shoots tainted slugs that burrow into combatants. Shoot six slugs and they'll all explode, stunning unstops and doing a bunch of damage. Also does more damage against taken enemies and gambit invaders. Ah uh, yes, I totally want to use a 180 hand cannon against a gambit invaders who probably have max xenophage ammo. Would be more useful if I actually played gambit in the first place too. Interestingly, sticking a boss with Wither Horde can also give this 10% buff. Combine this with Lucky Pants and you've got yourself a pretty solid weapon. Any other build though, and it falls incredibly short. B tier for bang. Ace of Spades is the pinnacle of PvP hand cannons. At least it was at one point, I haven't actually played PvP in 6 months so don't quote me on that. Used to love using this thing in casual content until they buffed everything and now my hand cannon hits like a wet noodle. It's not awful though, intrinsic firefly, buffed up version of kill clip and a cool reload animation make this thing feel super good to use. B tier for buff strike enemies again Bungie. They need to be GM level or nothing at all. The Chaperone. Remember when people unironically used this for Deepstone Crypt day one? Fun times. This thing has the intrinsic perk Precision Slug, which means it's literally no different from any other slug in the game aside from lacking good perks like auto-loading and Vorpal. All it has is the perk Roadborne, which increases range, handling, and precision damage after getting a precision kill. I don't know the exact numbers on this in PvE, but it's probably not good enough to warrant using it. I will say though, Kinda satisfying to pull this thing out and one tap majors. C tier for can't do much worse. Izanagi's Burden. I think everyone knows exactly where this is going. Combine four bullets to create one ultra powerful bullet that one hits most enemies in the game. Particularly useful when paired with a rocket in a damage phase. Shoot, combine, switch, rocket, switch, shoot, combine. It's a super satisfying loop that ends up with you getting twice as much DPS as all your other teammates. You may get labelled as a no-life PvE warlord, but at the same time, bigger number equals better person. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with this one, S tier for super, super good. Arguably the best special weapon in the entire game for DPS. The last word is another chance for Lucky Pants Hunters to claim superiority over us peasants for having terrible primary DPS. Plot twist, we're using heavy weapons so we'll out DPS you regardless. The last word gets increased precision damage when you fire from the hip. It also fires full auto and just feels super unique overall. That said, can't recommend this thing for anything other than Lucky Pants since it's really difficult to use, especially on mouse and keyboard. Six bullets in the magazine is also barely enough to kill a major, let alone a horde of enemies. C tier for cool concept but not practical. Arbalest. It's a linear fusion rifle but it's a kinetic and has anti-barrier and disruption break. It's hard to believe this thing didn't have anti-barrier when it released. For me it's always been the go-to whenever there's barrier champions. Very rarely do I ever break a barrier shield with my primary these days. It's always this, stasis freeze or suspend. In fact, I probably wouldn't even notice if they removed anti-barrier from primaries altogether, especially this season where we have anti-barrier sidearm. I don't even have the catalyst either, which I only just noticed the other day. S tier for shields gone. That was awful, I'm giving up on this bit. Thorn, a 140 hand cannon that poisons enemies on hit. Unfortunately, the poison is nowhere near as lethal as the one from Osteostriga, but interestingly, it does work with necrotic grip. I want this weapon to be good, I really do, but on anything other than Warlock, it's just a little lacking. I could use this, or I could use an Adept Fatebringer with Explosive Payload Frenzy. 
choice is yours. I'll go B tier, it's a lot of fun with Necrotic Grip. Outbreak Perfected. This exotic sounds like the title of a build video. YouTubers seem to have an obsession with putting perfected after every build they make. Starfire Perfected, Strand Perfected, Invisibility Perfected, the list goes on. Outbreak Perfected is a pulse rifle that spawns nanites when you get a few precision hits. Super useful not just to add clay, but also boss DPS. This was particularly useful in the Caretaker and War Priest contest modes last year. Outside of day one raids though, I don't personally find myself using it, it's just not really my thing. I'll still go S tier though, it's pretty ridiculous. Lumina is the closest thing you'll get to a support weapon in this game. When you get a kill, glowing remnants will be left behind. Picking up these remnants grants noble rounds, which can be hip fired at your teammates, healing them and giving you both blessing of the sky. This is the highest universal damage buff in the game at 35%. For reference, Well of Radiance is only 25%, so this is kind of a big deal. It's honestly just a really fun weapon too. Getting Blessing of the Sky and proceeding to delete everything in one shot for 10 seconds is very entertaining for you, and I'm sure it's very entertaining for your teammates as well. S tier, definitely not something you want to be sleeping on. Bad Juju. Kills Roof fill the magazine, give you a damage boost, and grant super energy. This is the exotic to be using if you want to spam as many supers as possible. I'm talking 4 or 5 in a single strike. Why you'd need that many supers, I don't know, but what I do know is that this thing is a whole lot better in casual content than proper content. That's right, I'm a day one raider now, which means I get to gaslight everyone into not enjoying strikes. You're very welcome. I'm going to go B tier here. If you like a particular super for whatever reason, by all means use this. Monte Carlo. No idea what this has to do with an administrative area of the Principality of Monaco, but then again I'm barely even gold division on GeoGuessr, so what do I know about geography? It's gonna be the UK. It's gonna be Israel. Hungary. France. Just Kenya. This auto rifle gives you melee energy for dealing damage. It also has a chance to give you a full charge on a kill. It's also got intrinsic swashbuckler alongside a perk that gives you ammo when you get a melee kill. This is particularly useful because primary weapons tend to run out of ammo reserves incredibly quickly. It's alright, it does exactly what it says on the tin really. Not a bad option for any melee builds. That's if people actually made melee builds in the first place, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Beta. Bastion, a kinetic fusion rifle that shoots pellet spreads instead of energy projectiles. Also has intrinsic unstop, which would be good until you realise that literally every fusion with chill clip can also stun unstops now. Why you'd use this over a riptide I have no idea, but it does shoot kinda funny and that's cool. Does a decent amount of boss damage too, especially in that one encounter in Deepstone Crypt. Beta. With a horde, if you somehow aren't aware of this thing, it's a grenade launcher that shoots taken blights. If you stick an enemy, they'll slowly bleed out over time, which then drops the blight on the floor. You can also shoot it directly on the floor to spawn trap enemies. This is the best weapon in the entire game. It's got ad clear, it's got boss damage, it can kill mages, it can kill champions, the trajectory is good, the blast radius is good, damage is phenomenal, it's just the best weapon in general, and anyone who disagrees is probably a Cerberus stan, so you can't trust them. S tier for best weapon in the entire game. Traveller's Chosen is the other exotic from Season of Arrivals. I find it less of a weapon and more of a bounty grinding tool. You get 10 kills, you hold the reload button, and you instantly get back all of your abilities. This is good because abilities are good. It also creates some interesting situations where you can have 3 plus charges of some abilities. Take the Void Hunter melee for example, pair that with Omnioculus to get an extra melee, Gamblers dodge near enemies to get another free melee, consume your stacks for another free melee, and then dodge again for a fifth melee in a row. It can get kind of ridiculous. That said, I haven't touched this thing in years, so a high B is as high as I'll go. Hawkmoon. Here's a funny prank idea. Get a friend to wear your headphones at max volume and then fire the penultimate round out of this thing to cause permanent damage to their ears. It's very funny, trust me. On an unrelated note, I've got no friends anymore. This hand cannon generates stacks of paracausal charge for final blows and precision hits. The more stacks you have, the higher the damage of the final shot. Not bad, but not great. Kinda satisfying to one hit majors. This one gets B tier as well. No time to explain. Precision hits refund ammo and generate stacks of rewind again. At 10 stacks you gain a little shooty thing that shoots stuff. The actual damage this does isn't anything to write home about, but the refunded ammo makes this thing really useful in Nightfalls. I feel like this should have been a stasis weapon too, really, especially since you can also gain stacks by shooting enemies slowed or frozen by stasis. Solid weapon, I think this is just about Ata. Dead Man's Tail is a super unique scout rifle. At least it was until Longarm completely wiped the floor with it. It also got nerfed some time ago, removing the damage increase you got for gaining stacks of Cranial Spike, which completely crippled any hope of this thing ever getting used in PvE. Shoots slow, takes 10 whole seconds to reload, and doesn't get any damage bonuses. I think I go C tier here. Longarm is just better in every possible situation. 
Power creep is a major issue for Destiny as a game, and no weapon demonstrates this more than Cryostesia 77k. This sidearm used to be the only consistent way of freezing enemies until Bungie completely dunked on it with Aga's Scepter, Zephyr, Deliverance, Riptide, Orvendale, Verglass, Curve, and Conditional Finality. Feels horrible to shoot too, but I guess that's more personal preference. Get a kill, hold reload, and then freeze with the next shot. It's a simple loop, but not one that's particularly useful. C tier, you might find some use out of it with a stasis build, but you're better off with most other weapons. Aga's Scepter. It's a stasis trace rifle, but if you get a kill, everything around it gets frozen. Almost on forbearance levels of Adclo, and I don't say that lightly. With its catalyst, you can consume your super energy for more damage. In this mode, you'll slow and freeze, meaning you can stun and melt both overload and unstop champions. You also get built-in subsistence, which also procs off of stasis kills. It's a ridiculous weapon that I don't see enough people using. Maybe I'll make a build around it in my best builds for each subclass series. S tier. Forerunner, literally the only gun ever that anti-barrier sidearm would actually be useful on. It's essentially a special ammo sidearm, think Ariana's but cooler since it's Halo inspired. It's a lot of fun to use, but realistically you'll end up out of ammo a lot of the time. The catalyst does something with grenades, I don't think it's that good though. High B tier. Osteo Striga, probably my favourite exotic in the game aside from Witherhorde. I've even got the cool ornament for it for spending far too much money pre-ordering the deluxe edition. It's an SMG, right? but it shoots skulls. Now these aren't just any old skulls, they are skulls of death. As opposed to not skulls of death, <laughs> that didn't really work. It shoots projectiles. These projectiles track straight into the enemy's head, killing them incredibly quickly and releasing a poison burst. Unlike Thorn and Necrotic Grip, this poison kills everything. If anything shy of a boss gets infected, it will die. The poison also procs off of a certain number of hits. The intrinsic perk says these have to be precision hits, but they don't. With the catalyst, getting kills with the poison overflows the magazine, allowing you to stack over 100 bullets. The most S tier S tier that ever S tiered. Touch of Malice, more like you need a touch of grass if you actually have this exotic. Touch of Malice has the exotic perk Touch of Malice, getting imaginative with the names again I see, which makes the final round in the magazine really, really stubborn. You cannot get to zero ammo with this gun, it is literally not possible. The final round also does much more damage and hurts you. It's basically abusive relationship with the scout rifle. It also has a perk called Charge with Blight. Nice one, Bungie. With this perk, you generate stacks on kills, and when you reach 10 stacks, you can shoot one of those annoying take and blight things that the captains throw at you. The weapon in general, it's quite good. Very high DPS for a primary once you get to that final round, second only to Outbreak. Plus, running it with Devour can let you outheal the damage if you're using it for ad clear. Low A tier, but it's kinda hard to rate since I haven't actually got it. Quicksilver Storm, a super stable 720 RPM auto rifle that shoots arc rockets sometimes. Unlike something like Cerberus, the rockets proc off for sustained damage rather than at random intervals. The catalyst makes this weapon strand, which actually decreases its damage by 5%. I'm not joking, it literally does. It does however create some synergies with strand builds, but you're probably better off using the raid auto instead. A tier, feels super good and can definitely put in some work against harder enemies. Revision Zero, three guns in one, a two burst pulse, a four burst pulse, and a sniper rifle. Also has four catalysts in case one wasn't enough. You essentially build up this bar by getting precision hits. Holding the reload button when the notches are full will put this into an alternate fire mode that shoots sniper rounds. Also intrinsic anti-barrier and the option to switch between two and four bursts. Very solid pick for nightfalls, especially if you use the fourth times the charm version of the catalyst since that also works with the sniper rounds. A tier. Final warning, definitely not worth grinding thousands of strand medallions for, but it's kind of fun. Holding down the trigger will target up to three nearby enemies, releasing the trigger at full charge will shoot all the bullets rapidly and unravel targets. Hip firing makes these bullets track and do more body damage, while aiming down sights increases their velocity and precision damage. If that made no sense at all to you, you'd be correct, I've got over a thousand kills with this thing and I still don't even know how it works. B tier, very fun, would recommend. Conditional Finality is the new exotic from the Root of Nightmares raid. It's a double barrel shotgun except one barrel is stasis and one is solar. I hate that they're this way around though, they should be switched so it goes left to right, stasis to solar. Landing most of the pellets will do different weird and wacky things depending on the weapon's damage type. The first shot, stasis, will freeze enemies instantly while the second shot, solar, will ignite. This makes for an incredibly good special weapon that I'd love to build into one day. It would help if I actually had the weapon though. High A tier. I'm not going S because I have to justify not getting it yet. And finally for kinetics, Verglass Curve. Getting a kill loads of stasis arrow. These stack up to 5. Hip firing releases all your stasis arrows at once, laying waste to an entire battlefield in just one shot. 
particularly useful on Stasis Hunter or Titan where you can shatter all the crystals using Dive or Cryoclasm. You can also choose to freeze an individual enemy by walking up to them and shooting them in the face. A2. 